Hey guys, what is up? Man, I can't tell you how excited I am about doing this video today, covering my Blue Eddy AC200P power station and my 400 watts of solar as a alternative power solution for emergencies. This is my final piece, the icing on the cake to the plan that I've been working on all year. I'm going to be showing you what this baby actually can do living in an RV. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. The first thing I want to say is that I'm not one of those YouTubers that gets free equipment from manufacturers. Everything that I use in all of my videos, including this one, I buy with my own money. This video is not going to be one of those in-depth secret lab testing using fancy equipment and all that. But this video is going to show you how to use this Blue Eddy living in an RV and in our 50 amp RV in more ways than you'll ever see on any video on YouTube. This Blue Eddy is truly an amazing plug and play power station and checks all the boxes. I also want to mention there are so many reasons why I didn't go the regular route that most RVers go, like spending thousands of dollars on a big lithium battery bay, tons of solar up on the roof, different you know, solar controllers and a different converter and a larger inverter, complicated wiring and all that. So please don't ask me why I didn't do that or that's probably the way I should have gone. I wanted a simple plug and play power solutions for when emergencies strike. If you wanna know more details about my complete emergency plan, I'll post my prepare now video that I've already done right up here at the end of this video. I've been working on this emergency power plan all year. So whenever the grid goes down for any reason, like the 2021 uh, historic winter event that slammed into Texas, rolling blackouts, forest fires, weather storms, the campgrounds power goes out, et cetera, et cetera. Or when we boondock from time to time. This video is longer than I like to normally do, but stay with me. It'll be worth it. You'll learn more about how to use this Blue Eddy in an RV than any other video on YouTube. So let's get started with a quick overview. We've got a lot to cover. This Blue Eddy AC200P packs a huge 2000 watt lithium iron phosphate battery with a surge power of 4800 watts and has a 2000 watt pure sign inverter and has 3500 plus cycles. Now, even after 3,500 plus cycles, the Blue Eddy is still going to maintain 80% of its capacity. So for the way you and I would use this in our uh, RV, this thing will last well over a decade. Now, one of the main reasons I bought this Blue Eddy is because it's equipped with the lithium iron phosphate battery. And that's one of the main reasons I didn't buy the EcoFlow Delta. It uses a lithium ion battery. It has a MPPT solar controller and low battery protection, and it can handle up to 700 watts of solar. It has a real smart, touchable LED display that gives you all kinds of controls and tons of information that most of us will never need to know. It has just about every output port that you'll ever need and literally charge just about any device you throw at it. And it has six three-prong AC outlets. You can charge this baby with five different ways. It also has a whopping 25 amp outlet that allows you to power DC devices over 300 watts, but I'll probably never use this feature. And these two DC output ports are all regulated. It comes with a two year warranty and is UL certified, so you're not gonna have to worry about this thing catching fire and burning down your RV. Another really neat feature about this Blue Eddy is that while I'm using it to power things in the RV, I can also be bringing in tons of power from other sources and continue to be charging it. A lot of other units will not allow you to do that. 
When you receive the Blue Eddy right out of the box, you get a bag. You get the cigarette lighter 12 volt charger. You get an aviation plug. You get the MC4 connectors for solar and one AC uh, charging brick. Now I went ahead and spent an extra 149 bucks and got a second brick. And they give you this brick and this cable. And so with these two charging bricks, I can bring in 970 watts into this Blue Eddy and I can charge it from zero to 100 in two hours. Now this sucker weighs 61 pounds. It's heavy. So what I did is I built a little dolly and I bought some special wheels here. These are soft enough to where they won't uh, tear up the tile floor in, in the RV and they also have brakes so that when I store it, I can just push down the brakes and it keeps this thing solid. Underneath the Blue Eddy, you can see it has rubber feet on it. So as I move it around in the RV where I need it, I literally can move it with one finger. When traveling, I wheel it to the side of the bed and lock the wheels into place and it stays put. When we arrive at our destination, I park it next to my desk. I have perfected running this 50 amp RV on 15 amps for months at a time. I just have to watch how I manage my power. If you want to see how I do that, I'll put a link to that video right up here at the end of this video. Everything that you're going to see in this video is in my Amazon store. Down there. In the description text. So in order to power this 50 amp RV with 15 amps from this Blue Eddy, the first thing I had to do is I had to install a pass-through hatch. Here's how I did that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to install an RV electric cable hatch. You see that right there? It's also known as a pass-through, but it looks like this. This is for a 30 amp RV. I'm using this for my extension cord and my MC4 solar wires to come into the coach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right up here on the floor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill but an inch and three eighths. An inch and three eighths hole will be large enough for me to put this extension cord plug. It'll come up through here and it will go through those holes, that hole right there, and it'll allow enough room also for my MC4 uh, wire connectors for the solar panels. So let's get started. So I've got all my tools here all set and ready to go. And we are here at the front of the RV, right behind the front tire. If you look up underneath here, you'll see right there, here's the wires that I brought down for my LED. Here is the bracket for the seat belt. And here's where I'm gonna drill the hole for my pass-through uh, access plate right here. Okay, so I just did the pilot hole and you can see this is where the drill came up right through here. So I got the carpet cut out and this is where my th uh, one and three eighths hole saw is gonna come up through. Man, I just love cutting and drilling and making holes and stuff. Now let's go and prepare this. So here we go. Cut off this piece we don't need. This is where we're gonna screw that down to, right there, just like that. I'm gonna use a self-tapping screw because it's going to be screwing into metal. Okay, so I got all three screws. It's all nice and solid. There you have it. Uh, the cover, the lid, Close that when I'm not using it. And when I want to pull up wires, I can just put, open that up, run them up from underneath, and I'm good to go. Uh, remember, this is an emergency hole to bring in an extension cord and MC4 solar cable. So most of the time, this is going to be closed. So I thought I'd make, go ahead and make a rubber flap right here. And that way, any water that may come off of the front tire and go up in there, it won't go through that hole. It'll also prevent cold and hot air coming into the RV when I'm not using it. And this is what it looks like now with the cord being pulled through. In our particular RV, we have our master bath here. So if I go ahead and close this door and close this door, I don't have to worry about heating all of the rest of the motorhome because we're not out here. So by closing these two doors, 
I got this little box and it should be fairly easy to heat. And this is the heater that we're gonna use. You've seen this before. And Joni and I have used this for a long time. And so we already know, this thing's a pretty powerful little heater. So we always put it on low and we'll usually set it right about there or so. So I wanna show you here how I measure on what this thing draws. As it's warmed up, it peaks out right about 545 watts. I'm showing you all this prelude because we're gonna use this tonight on the Blue Eddy. So watch here uh, and unplug it. And I'm gonna plug it into this extension cord. And that extension cord comes right down under the floor so that the door will close right over the extension cord. Then I have it plugged into the Blue Eddy. I'm gonna turn on the Blue Eddy and you can see right there it's at 100%, okay? So tonight, when Joni and I get ready to go to bed, we're gonna turn on that heater, we're gonna turn on the Blue Eddy, then in the morning we're gonna come out and we're gonna look at the reading on the Blue Eddy battery capacity. So we're starting off at 100, and we're gonna see what it is in the morning after running it all night. Okay, good morning. It is 10 after seven. So we've nearly been running the Blue Eddy in the heater for nine hours. Let's go into the bedroom here. And you can see that it's at 69 degrees. And the Blue Eddy itself is at 7%. Now, if it was gonna get down into the teens, like the winter of 2021, Joni and I both have down sleeping bags, which keeps us even warmer using the same amount of power from the Blue Eddy. Now we need to recharge the Blue Eddy to 100%. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it up here to the front and we're gonna charge it with these two AC power bricks. So I have my cord coming through the hole right here with a Y on it and got those both plugged into the Y. So the first brick is going to go in here right there. Then we're gonna take the second brick and apply the adapter here this is also where you put your solar. So let's go out and start the generator. I'm gonna turn it on. So we're gonna let it warm up for about a minute or two. So now that it's warmed up, I'm gonna put it on eco mode. And then I'm gonna plug it in. The Blue Eddy automatically comes on and you can see right here is 466 watts and 470 watts, whatever that adds up to. So I've got my stopwatch here on my phone and let's see how long it takes to bring the Blue Eddy up to 100% from the generator using two brick. And there we go, 100% an hour and 58 minutes. That is a really, really good test. And with that generator uh, sipping the gas that it does, I can literally recharge this four times on one gallon of gas. So I'm gonna show you how I run this 50 amp RV on 15 amps being powered by the Blue Eddy. I know my RV so well I can run multiple things at a time and not exceed 15 amps. So I've already unplugged the RV from the pedestal and I've been running the inverter and other things in the RV. The reason I unplugged is I'm simulating that an emergency happened. I mean, these things can happen at any time, anywhere. Since we have no city power, our absorption refrigerator automatically defaults and starts running on propane. But we're also using 12 volt battery power from the house batteries to power the circuit board. But you know how much I hate using propane if I don't have to. I like to save it for when I really need it. Now, since we don't have any city power, my house batteries are no longer being charged either. But I have a four stage smart charger. I have two six volt Trojan 105 lead acid golf cart batteries wired in series. And these batteries have worked great for years the way Joni and I travel and live. Right now, the battery capacity is at 80% and we're currently using 10.5 amps. I've ran my 12.3 extension cord 
through my new pass-through hatch, so let's go to the back of the RV and see how I hook this up. So here at the back of the coach, here is where I normally would be plugging in my shore power into here, correct? But if you have a portable EMS or a portable surge guard protector or anything like that, what you want to do is you just unplug it because we're not going to need that. The reason you're not going to need that is because the Blue Eddy is going to be feeding 15 amps into the coach and it's going to be nice, clean, stable power. So once you've removed it, you take the power cord and you plug it into your dog bone, your 50 to a 120 plug. And then you take the other end that came through the hatch inside the RV and you plug that in. So now let's take a quick look at my electrical beta and I'll show you how to deal with a hardwired EMS. So as I've showed you before in prior videos with this progressive uh, hardwired EMS, it also has a control module right here. And this allows me to bypass the EMS. So in order for the power to come through from the Blue Eddy, I'll be coming up here and I'll be turning on the bypass. Okay, so now we're back in the RV and we're gonna turn on the Blue Eddy. We're gonna to go to this AC off button and we're gonna press that and turn AC power on. And now the Blue Eddy is putting power over here into these outlets. Here's the other end of the extension cord. We're gonna take it and plug it in to an outlet. Since I'm bringing in AC power, I don't need to use the inverter anymore. Turn off the inverter. Battery converter came on and now it's charging. I'm currently charging at 13.3. I'm using 24.5 amps and I'm at 81%. And that will continue to rise as that converter charges the batteries. In an emergency situation, I may not have to take it all the way up to 100 or I may deploy my 230 watt portable solar panel outside and bring in more juice into the house batteries. It just depends on the situation that you're in. But here I'm just trying to demonstrate that the minute I turned on that Blue Eddy, our converter came on and it's automatically now starting to charge those batteries back again. Now that we're bringing in power from the Blue Eddy, by default, our absorption refrigerator automatically goes back to electric and the house batteries are no longer drawing 12 volt for the circuit board. And the real nice thing now that we're running off of Blue Eddy power, I'm no longer using propane. You see, I'm able to save that propane. And this fridge right here, it only pulls about 2.7 amps. So this Blue Eddy test demonstrates clearly how I can take care of the two most important things in this RV, my house batteries, the fridge, I don't want to lose my groceries. And this test is running straight off the Blue Eddy, but I can still bring in additional power into the Blue Eddy while I'm powering this RV with 15 amps. Now, if you don't want to hook up the Blue Eddy directly to the power cord, to bring 15 amps into the RV and power the whole RV, you can certainly use the Blue Eddy as a standalone unit in the RV to power 120 volt or 12 volt items. Let me show you some examples. I have an iMac, two big hard drives, my desk fan, my desk lamp, my printer, and everything plugs in right down here into my surge protecting box. So everything plugs into right there. So this one plug powers all of that. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna plug it into the Blue Eddy and turn the Blue Eddy on. So now I'm gonna turn the workstation on and I can run this thing for hours. Let's see how much the power this thing is using right now. Yeah, it's bouncing around from like 155 to about 200, somewhere in there. So in an emergency situation, I can still edit all my videos and run this entire workstation. With this same plug plugged into the Blue Eddy here, this is how my love seat is plugged in. So I'm still able to totally recline the love seat. Now, if you don't wanna use your inverter and your house batteries, 
to watch TV, you just plug your TV directly into the Blue Eddy. Now you have to remember this Blue Eddy has a 2000 watt pure sine inverter. So it's good for all these electronics. You don't have to worry about the TV or the computer or any of these uh, you know, sensitive devices that we have today. So here's another example of where you can charge a whole bunch of stuff all at once, all your devices, right? Now, my laptop is old school laptop. It requires an AC outlet. So I have it plugged in here. We've got Joni and I's phones and tablets and all that. And I even threw in one of our dehumidifiers. So on the DC side with all our devices, we're pulling 24 watts. With my laptop and the dehumidifier, we're pulling 48 watts. Now, how many of you use CPAP machines? With this Blue Eddy, you can run two CPAP machines all night long with no problem and not use your house inverter or your house batteries. Now, CPAP machines without a humidifier, they run about somewhere around 53 watts. A CPAP machine with a humidifier is going to run about 93 watts or so. Just think about it. You're in an emergency. You have no power. You're really limited and you need those CPAP machines to sleep. What a great answer to that problem. Okay, I got one of Joni's favorite appliances here. It's plugged into the Blue Eddy. It's her Emerald Lagasse pressure cooker, air fryer, steamer, and electric multi-cooker. It'll easily run this thing. Let's go look at the Blue Eddy right now. So right now it's running at about 1175 watts. When she's pressure cooking, it usually takes 20, 30 minutes. That Blue Eddy will do this with no problem and still have about 50% or so, 40% left over. And while we're here in the kitchen, whether you're in a van, a small RV, or a big rig like us, and you have a smaller 12 volt refrigerator, it'll run that thing easily. You want some toast in the morning? Let's have some toast. Now let's go look at the Blue Eddy. 750 or so watts. Now I know a lot of you have a electric grill outside or a little hot plate inside. That Blue Eddy will easily run those two items. Now I don't have those two items to demonstrate, but I've already researched it and it will run those items. Just remember, if you're gonna be running any appliance that draws a lot of wattage, 700, 800, 1100, whatever, you can always deploy solar outside to bring uh, more power into the Blue Eddy and, and really lengthen the amount of time that that Blue Eddy will work for any situation. A lot of you use a Keurig a coffee maker. It'll run that too. Okay, so it's an emergency situation and let's just assume that we're running really low on propane and we don't want to use our propane cooktop. Well, we also have an electric a frying pan here. You could plug this directly into the, into the Blue Eddy and use this. Now, Joni usually uses this skillet when she's doing something quick, you know, uh, eggs or something like that, where you're only gonna be using it for 15, 20 minutes. The Blue Eddy would be able to use this easily. Now, here's another really good test if you don't wanna hook the Blue Eddy to the, the whole coach like I showed you before, if we're gonna use it inside. Uh, would you consider a microwave convection oven a pretty hydro item? Yeah, you bet. I know a lot of you have this plugged in, in in different places. Our convection oven plugs in right here, but I unplugged it and ran an extension cord to it. So I don't know about you, but I love bacon in the morning. So we're gonna do this test. I put four pieces of bacon there on a paper towel and a paper plate. I put that on there. I've got this down to a science. Stick it up in there for three minutes and, and 15 seconds. Let's see if we can break this Blue Eddy. Right now it's using 1725 watts or so. Okay, it's done. And look at that there. The Blue Eddy will easily run most all of your electric power tools or it'll charge all of your battery operated tools too. Just plug in your batteries there and plug it in. Now we're charging our tool batteries. I could go on and on about all the different things uh, that this Blue Eddy can run, but I think that this 
a wide example of different things gives you a pretty good idea that it can, it can run anything that you put to it. And this is exactly why I bought this unit. This is a great, quiet, passive, alternative power source in the event of an emergency. Okay, for our next test, I'm gonna show you how the Blue Eddy will run this heater. This is the one that's in our Amazon store. And this is an awesome, very lightweight, much smaller footprint. And we're gonna test this baby today from the Blue Eddy. In an emergency situation, and you need to stay warm, and sometimes having heat for four, five, six hours is gonna make all the difference in the world in surviving or just being comfortable. So here's how this is gonna work. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the Blue Eddy. So then we're gonna take the plug from the furnace and plug it in. So then we're gonna turn on the furnace and we're gonna push this next button here and put it on low. And then we're gonna push it again and we're gonna bring it down to about 65 degrees. Then we're gonna go back to here and put it on low again. As you can see right here, the furnace is drawing 852 watts. Now we have a car sitting outside and that car's got gas in it. So I'm gonna show you the next step that we're gonna do. Okay, you remember a few months ago, I showed you as part of my power backup uh, solutions, I bought this Beztec 500 watt inverter and it came with this uh, cigarette lighter plug. You just put these two wires on here and you can plug this into a regular cigarette lighter inside your car to charge different things. Low voltage things, okay? I showed you that. But this Beztec also came with a heavy duty set of wires with alligator clips. And you can connect this directly to the battery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the unit on. And I have an extension cord plugged in right here and into the Blue Eddy. Now, of course, if I just kept that thing hooked up to the battery, uh, eventually what's gonna happen? <laughs> it's gonna kill the battery, right? So we're gonna start the car. We're just gonna gently lay the hood down just like that. So here's the extension cord coming up through my new pass-through that's uh, plugged into the inverter. It comes through here and I've plugged in this AC brick. So let's look at the Blue Eddy now. So you can see the furnace is still pulling uh, 852, 8, you know, whatever, it's to say 850. But now we're bringing in 449 watts in from the inverter from the car. So right now, the furnace is only using uh, about 400 watts. So we basically cut that in half. But that's not the best of this whole plan. Let's go to the back of the coach. I've got two 200 watt solar panels wired in series. And this is going to be able to give me some additional DC power to come in and charge the Blue Eddy also. So I'll have the furnace taking power, the inverter giving power, and the solar panels giving power. So let's go in and see what that looks like now. So you can see here we're bringing in 232 watts of solar. So with the heater pulling about 850 watts, but bringing in 445, 46, whatever, from the car inverter, and then 232 from the solar, uh, this heater is actually only using 158 watts. Man, I'll tell you what, that is just fantastic. At 158 watts, we can run this heater for a long time and stay warm. But that's not the last thing I want to show you. I got one more little trick to show you. So let's just assume that your house batteries are still in pretty good shape. You've got some power to use there. If you don't have solar to bring into the Blue Eddy, here's what you can do. So I've disconnected the solar. I'm trying to simulate that. What if you don't have solar, okay? So we're gonna unplug the solar and we still have this aviation plug. This 12 volt cigarette lighter cable also comes with the Blue Eddy. So we're gonna take this plug now, plug it into the aviation plug, plug the aviation plug back into the Blue Eddy, and then I can take the cigarette plug and just plug it in to a 12 volt outlet. The cigarette lighter now is bringing in 98 uh, watts. The inverter is bringing in 452 and the furnace is still using right at about 850 or so. Without solar, I'm bringing in a total of about 550 watts. Either way, whether you grab some house battery power, whether you grab solar, 
using the inverter. These are multiple ways where you can keep this baby running when you really need to stay warm. Now those solar panels, of course, I got them hanging on the back of the motorhome here in RGV because that's where all the sun is. That's where I would use them here at this location. But if we were in an emergency situation and I had to deploy this Blue Eddy, I could very easily uh, put those solar panels out to the side of the motorhome or the front or wherever the, the most sun is. So this is gonna be the first uh, simulated test if we were anywhere in the country and all of a sudden we do not have power. We're either boondocking, the power grid went down, rolling blackouts, whatever, and now we have to deploy the solar panels to use the Blue Eddy. So I have two 200 watt solar panels out here and these wires that come with the panel are about 10 feet long. So this first test is I wanted to see if there was any solar power drop using the 10 foot leads and then another 20 foot extension so I can keep the Blue Eddy in the coach, leave the solar panels outside. I have these panels wired in series. So it's basically red to red, black to black, except when you're connecting the two panels together, you take the black wire and hook it to the red wire of the other panel. So right now for our first test, having 400 watts of solar is bringing in 276, 277 off of 400 watt panels. And so now what I wanna show you, I think a lot of you aren't gonna believe me. <laughs> Usually when you run longer extension wires to solar panels, you will get uh, some uh, power loss. You'll get some resistance and you'll lose some power. But I'm gonna disconnect uh, this extension cord. Okay, so there's my extensions, 20 feet sitting right there. And now I have the Blue Eddy uh, wired up straight from the panels. You see that? Look at that, 277, blah, blah, blah. And that's really important for me because when I hang these on the back of the RV, I'm not gonna have to worry about losing any power with that extension. Okay, so here we are at the back of the RV. We're in the exact same sun conditions uh, that we were just a few minutes ago. But what's really cool about these Blue Eddy uh, panels is they have the ability to hang them. So I came up and built this wooden hanging bracket. It mounts right here on the top rung of the ladder. And then I put some uh, stainless steel hardware up here with some D-rings and just hung it. The wires come out the bottom here. So I have the original 10 feet of cable that comes with the, the panels, plus a 30 foot extension. And let me show you what that looks like. And so they come right up here through my uh, pass-through hatch and hook right into the Blue Eddy. And you can see right here that I'm currently running uh, 219 uh, watts or something like that. I'm going to say 220. If I was to have angled, so if I would, you know, bring them out at an angle, I'd gain about another 40, 50 watts. So I would have the exact same wattage that I showed you out here when I had them on the ground pointed at an angle. I'd be getting right around 270, 275 or whatever. And in the event I ever need to run solar, this is exactly the way I'll do it. The other thing about these solar panels is how they fold up. They weigh uh, right about 14 pounds or so. I mean, they're really lightweight. But what you do to wrap them up when you're not using them is you just fold them just like this, okay? And you take this flap and you fold it in, and then you have this little clasp right there. And now you have the handle to carry them. Once you have it folded, you have this little pouch right here. And now you take the wiring and you just fold it right up inside here. You see that? Nice little zipper pouch. And then what I've done is I kept the boxes that they came in because I don't want to be dragging these back and forth as I'm moving them in places and out and having it rub up against this uh, casing right here. So for storage purposes, I just put it right back into the case and then I take the box and store them right there in the bay. Look at that, isn't that sweet? And I just love that feature. When I don't need them, they're out of the way.
My onboard Onan 5500 generator, it has 1100 hours on it. But there are some times and some reasons why I wouldn't or shouldn't use it. For one reason, it's really loud and it uses a lot of gas. In an emergency, resources like fuel can become unavailable real quick. It's also a tremendous waste of gas for the little bit amount of energy you need to bring into the RV in an emergency. My small Honda generator is always ready to go and I carry an extra gallon of gas. I can use that to power our rig and bring in 15 amps from the Honda or recharge the Blue Eddy. So if you have a gas motorhome like we do and you want to be able to tap into all that fuel that you're carrying with you in the gas tank, forget about siphoning it out like you did in the old days. Manufacturers for years have been installing a ball type valve at the bottom of the fuel fill tube so that way in the, in the event of a tip over it won't spill fuel all over the road. Now there is a hack on YouTube that shows how to try to get that gas out of that tank with that ball valve. I've tried it, it doesn't work. I tried it both on the car and the motorhome. It does not work. So here's how to get all that gas that you already have to run the small generator or the car. So here we are at the back of the RV where my big Onan 5500 generator is. And you can see right here, this is the fuel line that goes up into the carburetor. All I have to do is simply remove this fuel line and bring it over here to my gas can and hit my prime button right here and hold it down and it will start to put gas in there. You see that? That is a really easy way. I got, what, 70, 80 gallons of gasoline, and I need to get some in here for the Honda. Now, what I might do later on, instead of having to remove that line, uh, it's simply held on by a little uh, clamp right here. It was really easy to, to remove. But what I may do in the future is underneath, I may put a valve where I can just turn it off or turn it on and drain it from underneath here. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or not. This is an emergency situation, but this right here is an easy way to get all that fuel into a container where you can use it. There are so many other applications that I would love to have shown you how to use this Blue Eddy, but this video has been long enough. But I think you get the gist of it. This Blue Eddy is a beast. If you are not prepared for an emergency, I highly encourage you to plan and do it now while you can. Now I know the way I approached my emergency plan won't be liked by everybody, and that's okay. Everybody has to find their own way that works for them. But for me, this is a simple, plug and play solution that gives me multiple ways to bring power, reliable power, cheap power into the RV in the, in the event of an emergency. With these five things that I have bought, my Blue Eddy AC 200P and 400 watts of solar, my 230 watt ZAMP solar panel that I can wire directly into the house batteries and keep them topped off, my 500 watt Beztec inverter that I use on the car, my Honda EU2200i portable gas generator that uses very little gas, and lastly, my two-in-one solar charger and lantern. Joni and I are ready to go. Also, this is important. Be sure to go down below in the description text and read the very first comment that I'll pin at the top. This is going to give you additional information and details about my setup. Everything that you saw in this video is in my Amazon store. And I want to thank you all so much for those of you who have bookmarked my Amazon store in your browser and you use my store for everything that you need, whether it's RV related or not. 
Using my Amazon store is a great way to say thank you, Martin, for making these videos and helping the RV community. The link to my Amazon store is down there in the description text. Don't forget to watch these two videos right up here. These are going to show you how I came to the conclusion to make the decisions I did to go this route. I really hope that this video has heightened your awareness to have a robust alternative plan, an alternative power source plan in the event of an emergency because emergencies are going to happen. And if you're not equipped when an emergency comes, it ain't going to be fun. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.